I swear to God, y'all, I'm not meant to make this video today. First, I recorded it, and I finished it, and it was 23 minutes long. Pretty proud of myself, but I watched through it, and I messed up so much. Like, my aunt came in, and she started talking to me, and then I started, like, stuttering a lot because I'm really tired. Then the second time I recorded this video, the lighting, like, the sun was setting, so it was, like, super dark at the end, and it really bothered me. Then the third time I made this video, I realized that I'm wearing a dress, and the lower half of my dress wasn't dressing me so I was like oh my god this is YouTube not Pornhub so I deleted it um so this is the fourth time or the third time fourth probably the fourth or the third I forgot that shows you how tired I am um this is my ex time recording this video and my last time but um at least I already know what I'm gonna say and I'm gonna say it so it says Hello, Elisa. Thank you so much for all the videos you've uploaded. Oh, this, by the way, is anonymous and an email. You're the only YouTuber I've come across to not only offer wholesome advice that is free, but personal as well. That's a very selfless thing of you to do, and I promise that we appreciate it. No probs, dude. My ex and I broke, my ex girlfriend and I broke up about six months ago. It's been pretty long. The timing was really bad. There was a lot going on. We were going through some tough times, and we didn't know what to do. We told each other that we no longer loved one another, so we used that as an excuse to break up. Now that time has passed, I see that that wasn't the case. I still loved her, but I was just blinded, dazed, and confused at the moment. Throughout these six months, I've realized that every woman just points back to her. We don't talk to each other anymore, nor have we since the breakup. She's been dating new guys, but I don't think any of them have been serious. I've seen a few new girls here and there, but it's her that I miss in the end, and it's her that I love. I already watched some of your similar videos, but I was wondering if you could give me some personalized, personalized advice. I'm scared. I want her back. I do. But I'm also scared because the breakup was official, so obviously our parents know, and our friends know, and our church knows. Everyone knows. So we were separated in every aspect, and I'm terrified of reigniting all of that, or even figuring out if she wants me back or not. Is there any way of knowing she wants me back without me asking her so maybe I can have some motivation to maybe one day have the talk with her? I feel like a small pi a small fish, small fish in a big pond with all of this. I'm not sure what to do. I love her and I miss her, but maybe she deserves this freedom. But what if she didn't mean it when she said she didn't love me either because I didn't mean it, meet it. I <laughs> oh my God. because I didn't mean it. So maybe she doesn't either. I don't know. Please help me. Sincerely, anonymous. So really good email. God, I'm so tired. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and hop right in because I've already recorded this video so many times, but the first thing I'm gonna say is that often when couples break up, the first, the go-to excuse is, you know, I don't love you anymore or I don't feel the same for you anymore, but one thing that you need to remember is that love is love no matter what it looks like, feels like, smells like anything, and I used this example in my last video, it's like an avocado or like a cherry or anything that has a pit inside of it, let's say an avocado, the pit is the love, like the true burning hot fire love that y'all have for one another even if the avocado is fresh and ripe or if it's like squishy and stinky no matter what it looks like what it feels like like especially feels like or what it smells like or what you know it tastes like no matter what it currently like what its state is its physical state at the moment it still has that pit inside and often we're so used to having like a fresh and ripe avocado that as soon as it gets spoiled for a minute it's like oh my god you know we have to throw it out it's like like awful it's just deteriorating and we forget that there's love inside of that but we can't see it because we're too distracted by the crap on the outside so you said y'all were going through a tough time you were going through some things or whatever and you immediately just said oh i don't love you anymore like that's no love is ugly sometimes that's normal like love is supposed to be bickering sometimes love is supposed to be the occasional trust issue or the communication issue or this and that like anything like love is supposed to be it's meant to be questioned sometimes and it's okay for you to sometimes wonder like is this like why am I still doing this but you know if the pit is there then the pit is there if y'all love each other then you love each other that's just something that can't be taken out so the one the, that's one thing you need to remember is that no matter you know what you're going through instead of immediately saying oh you know we have all these problems we have to throw it out because clearly we're not meant to be together anymore that's not the case love isn't what it looks like in the movies love isn't what it sounds like in the books love isn't perfect love is ugly love is the ugliest thing in the world like love is like 
food stuck in your teeth and smelly socks that haven't been washed in weeks and you know like like marriage doesn't make all the problems go away like for example like people think oh if i get married it'll make everything go away like, no being married is just legally being stuck to your partner so don't think that marriage is going to solve everything there is nothing that will ever like be able to solve any problems that you have if you really love someone it's always going to be there problems are inevitable problem Blah, blah, blah. problems are inevitable problems are always going to be there you know, people are going to make mistakes people are going to mess up but if you have that pit inside even if you can't see it right now or if you can't feel it right now or if you're too distracted by the exterior like the shell what pe what other people see or what you're seeing we often forget that there's still love in it and we don't really realize until you know we throw the avocado out and it's decomposed and the pit is left and we still see shit like I really loved him. I really loved her. Like, we see it after a while if we throw it out and it decomposes. Instead of waiting, you know, for, I mean, metaphor metaphorically for the avocado or peach, whatever metaphor I've been using, for it to, like, you know, heal back up and be peachy perfect again, no pun intended. We often just throw it out when it gets ugly, and that's not how it works. Love is ugly sometimes, and you just need to remember that, and so does she. Um, I don't know how long y'all were together. You didn't say it in this email. Nor do I know if you've ever dated other people, but you know that after you're with someone for a long time, the relationship naturally gets rocky. And with anybody, it's going to get rocky. With Jay-Z, with Beyonce, with Channing Tatum, like Dave Franco, like anybody that you date, like freaking Judge Judy or Oprah Winfrey or freaking Dr. Phil. You can date anybody in the world and there will be problems after a certain amount of months. And it just comes natural after being together for a long time. It's just like a fruit. You know, if you leave it sitting out, it starts to stink. But, you know, if it's love, the inside, the, the pit, it's still going to be there. No matter what it looks like on the outside. So that's the first thing I want to make clear to y'all. Is that love is love. Even if it doesn't look like love or feels like love. Like, it stays. And the problems don't stay there forever. It just, it comes and it goes, but people are often so frightened by all these problems all of a sudden that they just abandon their relationship because they think it's the end, you know, it's a downhill slope from here, but no, life is up and down, you know, you're going to have ups and downs, and sometimes if you have a down that lasts longer than you typically are used to, let's say you normally get in a fight and it lasts for a couple days, but let's say you got in a fight and it lasted a month or a month and a half, you're like, oh shit, it's never going to go back up better end it no that's god challenging you that's god challenging you while simultaneously the devil trying to ruin you it's two things going on at the same time so you decide who you're gonna let win god or the devil you're gonna let god win if you decide you know i'm gonna i'm gonna persevere i'm gonna show god that i love this girl and even if we're going through some tough times i'm a keeper or you can let the devil win and say yeah you're right this doesn't feel good anymore i'm gonna throw it out so just keep that in mind it might be rocky it might be rough but that doesn't mean you don't love him anymore. It just means that you don't love the situation. But that's no excuse to take it out on your partner. And I've heard many stories from people, you know. I told her I didn't love her anymore. but Or I told him I didn't love him anymore. Like, vice versa. But then I realized that I did. And it's too late. Like, you better try to get her back. Or get him back if you're a dude. Or get if you're a girl. Before it's too late. Because a lot of people have missed their opportunity. Um, The thing is. You said, is there any way of knowing she wants me back without me asking her? That's the thing. There's not. Um, I mean, unless she blatantly does signs or portrays signs that she wants you back. You know, if she texts you or calls you or maybe, like, Snapchats you or likes old pictures or reshares re old posts. Or if she makes it obvious she wants you back, then she does. But aside from that, woo, excuse me, girls are really good at concealing their problems. You know, we can easily act like a boy never happened. Like, we can easily just be like, uh, who dat? Oh, the boy I was with for six years, uh, who dat? Like, we're so good at brushing things off. So, if you're not seeing anything from her or hearing anything from her, that doesn't necessarily mean that she doesn't want you back because maybe she does, but everyone has their own method of coping. Just because her coping isn't seen by you doesn't mean she's not coping because, I mean, maybe she wants you back more than she wants air to breathe or maybe she wants you just as much as she wants gum on the bottom of her shoe. You're not gonna know unless you ask her and that's scary. I'm basically telling you to enter this conversation blindfolded. That's the only choice. If you want her back and you say you love her, okay, well, if you love her so much, then go talk to her. You don't need signs to motivate you. Just go do it. It's not supposed to be comfortable. You ended a relationship and now you want to reignite it again. So what makes you think it's going to be comfortable? There's nothing comfortable about doing that. 
So go talk to her. Say, look, we broke up, I know. But the truth is, I still love you. I didn't mean what I said. Some weird girl t on the internet told me that our love is like a fruit. Our love is like a peach. It rotted for a minute and it was stinky and it was squishy and it was just dripping all over the place. But after I threw it out, I realized that there's a pit in that girl and I want that pit. Like, be honest. Like, just tell her you really have nothing to lose. That's the way I saw it after my breakup. Like, I confessed some stuff after the breakup and it took me a long time to realize if I wanted to do it or not. But then I realized, you know, I already lost the boy that I love so much. I already lost my best friend. What else do I have to lose? So I just did it. And, you know, it didn't end up the way I wanted it to. But I don't go to bed now saying, what if? What if I would have sent that letter? What if, like, what if I would have never confessed? Like, or what if I, or what if I would have confessed? Like, I don't ever have that what if anymore because I did it. And that's the thing I always say, you know, what's meant to be will be is not true. It'll only be what you make it to be. So now I know. Now I know, and you will know if you have the talk with her. And another metaphor I always use is the black lighting. Whether or not she wants you back is already there. It's like black lighting on a wall. Let's say it says yes or no. Like, yes, I want you back, or no, I don't want you back. Shining the light on it is not going to change the answer. Either it's there and she does want you back, or it's there and she doesn't. But, you know, whether or not you shine the light or you don't shine the light, it doesn't change what her answer is going to be. All you can do is find out. All you can do is find out. Do you understand what I mean by that? Like, if you shine the light on the wall, whether or not she's going to say, yes, I want you back, or no, I don't, it's there, and nothing you can do or say or think or pray will change that. It's already there. And whether or not you keep hiding from her or whether or not you confront her, the answer's not going to change. So you might as well just find out just for your sake and for your sanity and for your mental health and for your sleep at night. You might as well just go find out what she has to say. Um, the last thing I covered was the whole parents thing. So, it's just like breaking in a new shoe. It's going to be very uncomfortable. It's going to be super uncomfortable when talking to the parents and talking to the friends. Because clearly, you know, you broke their little girl's heart, blah, blah. But the thing, like, that's their job. They're supposed to be tough on you because they have to put their child first. And they hate seeing their child in pain. But, you know, if you really love someone, you got to do what you got to do. And it will be uncomfortable. And you never know what the parents are going to do or say. But I promise you, they will gain a whole new level of respect for you because they know in their head right now. For example, let's say I'm your ex-girlfriend's dad. Ooh, wait, hold on. Where was I going with that? Um, okay, I forgot where I was going with that. So I'm just going to talk and hopefully it comes out. So let's say your name is Joe. Oh, it's a good thing Joe hasn't come back to my little Emily yet because if he did, I would kick his ass. You know, he's probably so scared of me and he's probably so scared to see me and my wife again because we don't like what he did to our little girl. Blah, 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 blah. But guess what? If you show, if you prove him wrong and come back to their daughter, they're going to be like, oh shit, you know, that boy was scared, but he actually came through like, oh my God, like they know how hard it is for you. They're parents. They've done what you're doing right now times a thousand. Like, they've been through this so many times. They know exactly how you feel. But they know when you're... In, they're going to try acting all cool like, no, you broke her heart. You know, what What do you want with my daughter? Blah, blah, blah. blah. But then in their heart, they're going to be like, oh, you know what? This was really hard for him to do after six months coming back to the parents and, like, talking to the parents. Like, good for him, you know? They're going to be like, my daughter deserves someone like that. My daughter deserves someone who despite of six months passing, still has the balls to talk to the parents and say, look, I want your daughter back. Like, it, they're going to act all tough on the outside, but on the inside, they're going to be pretty soft. And even if it doesn't look like it, they're going to really gain a whole new level of respect for you. And you just have to believe that. And even if it doesn't look like it, like I said, they're probably going to be really pissed off or really mad. But what the frick is my aunt doing? You just have to believe that. You know, even if it does seem really rough with the parents the first couple of days or weeks, they will see eventually that you're serious, you know, if you're serious, heaven forbid, and, you know, give you their daughter back mentally. Same with the friends, you know, talk to the friends, say, look, you know, I'm here for good, and make sure that you're really here for good, because what's more awkward, like, the, the only thing that's more awkward than talking to the parents after after a breakup is breaking up again. So make sure you're really set on, you know, her and this girl. And make sure that you she is what you want and need. And, you know, very young. Like, obviously, she makes the most noise out of anybody that I've ever met in my entire life. Um, 
obviously, you know, we're young, so there's not ever a guarantee that we're going to be with the person that we're with forever. But, you know, like, as long as you right now have an, that little, like, nudge in your heart, like, yeah, she's the one. Like, if you have that, that's enough to get you through. So just follow that nudge, and it will take you to good places. But I promise you, all of this uncomfort or discomfort that you're experiencing is 100% normal. Everyone goes through it. But one thing that I did say that I really like myself for saying is that so many people end up with the wrong person in their life because they were too afraid to speak up for what and who they wanted. And it's so true. I told you all about the guy who I talked to for 30 minutes. He ended up with the wrong woman. He said, you know, I love the woman that I'm married to, but I don't love her the same way I love my ex. I don't, you know, if I would have confessed my love to my ex, I would have been with her and I probably would have been a million times happier, but instead, I'm with this woman who when I'm laying in bed with her at night, I can't stop thinking about my ex. He made the mistake, so don't make it. Don't make it. And you know why he didn't ever go back to his ex? Because he was afraid of the discomfort. He said, I was too afraid to tell her how I felt. And look at me now, I'm with someone that I don't even love. I'm not saying that's going to happen to you, but there's a very high pos possibility, you know. Like, what's meant to be will not be. What's meant to be will only be if you make it be. He had the choice to make it be with the other girl, with the other woman, but he didn't. He didn't. What, what was meant to be for him is not who he's with now, but that's what he chose. It's never going to be what's already meant. That's not true. Like, it's only going to be what you like make it and it's so I hate that if it's meant to be it'll be it's not true like it's not true at all it's only gonna be if you put the effort in otherwise you're gonna be like that guy that I talked to just unhappy very unhappy I still see the pain in his eyes he was so unhappy so that's pretty much all I need to say um this whole thing is just gonna require balls there's really not a secret that I can tell you there's not like a tip or a trick Probably not the most helpful YouTube video, but honestly, I'm a girl. I've been through this. I've been in your ex's shoes. I know what it feels like. I know what works and what doesn't. So, first of all, determine if you really love her or not. If you do, like, truly love her, talk to her blindfolded. Not, like, physically b blindfolded, but, like, know that even if you don't have any ideas on if she wants you back or not, talk to her anyway. You know, text her. And the first sign that you're going to get is whether or not she responds you know, I mean, maybe if you go to her house and say, hey, like, can we talk? If she slams the door in your face, that's a sign. Or if you text her, hey, can we talk? And she ignores you, that's a sign. But, you know, as soon as she responds and says, like, yeah, we can talk, that's already a really good sign. So take it and run. Prepare what you have to say. You know, tell her the truth. Make her know that she's not a plan B or a plan C or a plan Z, as in zebra, but that she's your first option. Don't say, I want you back because it didn't work with anyone else. Or, I want you back because I'm lonely. No say i mean if that's true then don't be with her because that's a bullshit like thing to do but you know say like look my life sucks without you like you are who i'm meant to be with you know every morning when i wake up you're on my mind every night when i go to bed you're on my mind every time i pray you're on my mind like you are who it is you are the pit girl you are the pit and i want to be with you like really really when we're back like i don't know how long i were together you didn't say it in the email but i'm guessing it was long enough for you to know like what she likes to hear and what she doesn't but make sure you're telling her the truth so that's pretty much all i have to say the whole parent thing the friends thing it's gonna be uncomfortable but it's only gonna be uncomfortable for a few weeks and then it'll be good again you know it's just like a birkenstock it really sucks for the first few weeks but then it's like ah oh, this is the best shoe in the world so um that's pretty much it hope i help let me know how it goes very excited to see how this all turns out so thanks for bearing with me and my sleepiness and sending more requests and my stuff is down below for contacting methods. Alright, bye guys. Peace out. Oh, by the way, I'm not a psychologist or a licensed professional or a licensed counselor or anything. I'm just 19 and not a doctor. Okay, bye.